Welcome to the tech space and in this set of tutorials we're going to be going over JavaScript. So what JavaScript is, as you can see here on uh, Google's definition of it, is a high, high level dynamic untyped and interpreted programming languages language and it has been standardized in the ECMA script language specification. And basically, to give you a little bit more in-depth uh, a little bit more in-depth description of it is JavaScript is unobject oriented which means that when you write a program in JavaScript, most likely you will use all of that code in that one program. Where other programming languages, you can maybe write a little bit of code and then copy and paste it into another program and have that same result. JavaScript isn't like that. Um, I mean, some things may work like that, but for the most part, it is just strictly um, from top to bottom based and you don't really create objects uh, too much. Um, if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. Uh, if you don't know what object oriented programming is, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, object oriented programming language would be like C, C sharp, C++, um, and then uh, languages that we're working with like JavaScript would be more like Python and uh, JavaScript of course so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to in this set of tutorials is we're gonna learn everything from user inputs to um, how JavaScript works with websites to make websites uh, dynamic make uh, websites move and uh, give it tons of different properties you learn how to make graphics we'll learn how to do math We'll learn how to make different functions to perform different tasks. Um, we're going to learn pretty much everything about JavaScript. Well, not pretty much. We're going to learn everything about JavaScript. We're going to go over examples, uh, tutorials about the you know the basics and uh, how to get the code down. And then after that, we'll have some exercises in there to you know refresh refresh your knowledge and test your knowledge of what you know and what you've learned so far in JavaScript. So. Um, basically that's it. Um, I have other tutorials on other programming languages. If you are interested in, er, in uh, learning C++ or um, HTML or CSS, HTML and CSS are web design languages, so you can build websites uh, and do a lot of cool stuff with HTML and CSS, and then C++ is very similar to JavaScript. So, you know, if you learn JavaScript, you'll pretty much be able to you know transfer over to C++ very easily but again C++ is an object oriented programming language and for that reason it's a little bit different uh, but again if you want to learn C++ or JavaScript I would just pick one pick one, whichever one feels the best go to that set of tutorials uh, if you want to learn Java just stay at the set of tutorials and we'll get it done so Basically, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, suggestions, or anything about videos, uh, if you're having a problem running your code, <coughs> or even downloading Notepad++, which I'll put the link in the description again, then let me know. And other than that, we'll start learning JavaScript in the next video. Welcome back to tutorial 2 on JavaScript. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going over the HTML template and how to actually write code. So, first, what we're going to go over is making the actual uh, file that you're going to store the website in. So, as in, I mentioned in the last tutorial, JavaScript is ran in web forms. So, to do that, what we're going to want to do is have some HTML file stored in a folder. So you're going to go to your desktop, create a folder, name it whatever you want, and name my website too. Or you can create it in your documents. You can create the folder wherever. I created mine on the, on the desktop for um, just ease of access. But then you're going to want to go and open up your Notepad++ from the last tutorial and go down to Save As. And then once you go to save as, you know, browse, find your folder, and then save it as index.html. So as you can see, I have index.html, and that's what mine is saved as. Save it, go back to that folder, make sure it's in that folder, and there you go. So next, what we're going to want to do is go back to our text editor, or Notepad++. If you chose to use a different one, that's okay, but... Notepad++, like I said, is very convenient. So what we're going to do is type HTML. 
uh, well, first you have to have a less than sign, then HTML, and uh, basically all HTML, if you don't know anything about it, a lot of the uh, elements that are declared are put between these less than and greater than braces. So once you see that, or once you have HTML typed in, we're going to do this. And that basically says to end this HTML document. Now when you see this forward slash, that's how you end an element. So this is how you start an element, and this is how you end an element in HTML. And if you want to go um, look at my HTML videos, it's not really important. I'm just going over, um, well it is important if you're going to be creating websites and then, you know, uh, actually creating an actual website and then implementing JavaScript on top of it. But if you want to just learn JavaScript for now, that's fine as well. Uh, but don't feel intimidated or like you have to go check out HTML. Uh, just know that, you know, it is an option. So next we want to create the same type of thing inside this HTML that's called a head. And that basically means this is the header. This is where all of our uh, basically... If I had a separate file, so if I had two HTML files or two uh, CSS files or a different type of file, I could link it inside the header. So in the header, basically, we just want to include this one set of information, and it's meta char set. And again, don't even worry about what this is; just put it in. Is equal to UTF-8, and then make sure you put that in quotations, and then uh, ending brace. Uh, to end that, and usually again, you don't use ending braces in C or in HTML. When you're just declaring uh, the start of an element, you use an end of an element. But inside of here, we have a special case where we do. So next, what we're gonna do is something simple. We're gonna give our website a title. So how we have this Blake web page up is on Notepad plus plus. We're just gonna go to run. And under here, you run it in the browser of your choice. You can run it in anything. <clears throat> I use Chrome because Chrome is usually the most updated version uh, internet browser. So just run it in Chrome and you'll get this HTML page that'll pop up in Chrome. And this is where you're going to be writing your JavaScript. So basically, once you have this head down, the last thing we're going to do is type body. And that's it. So body and then close it. And that's all. So we'll put this up here. And that's your basic layout for an HTML file. Now, to write JavaScript, we just simply write script and end script. So I'm pretty sure you're getting the gist of it right now. You start elements, you end elements, HTML. Um, that's pretty much all you do. So inside these braces, we can write any JavaScript and it will print out to the screen or do whatever you say. So you write all of your code inside here. So we could do this so that the whole body is all JavaScript code. And then we're just going to click Control S to save it. Or you can go up here to File, and click Save. Control S is a lot faster though. Um, oh, last thing. So, title. So, you're going to want to title your web page. And that's what's up here. So, it says index.html. We're just going to change ours to the text space. And again, you can I just put whatever title you want. I recommend, you know, as we go along, try to, you know, integrate your own uh, style into the code as well. So, the text space, then we go back and we re refresh it, and we get the text space up here as the website name in the tab. So, that's basically the basics of a layout. Uh, this is all you, what you're going to need for every single document that you write in JavaScript. So, remember this layout. Uh, again, if you want to go ahead and Google what this means go for it. Um, it's nothing to uh, really worry about. Just leave it there for right now. And that's it. So this is the basic layout for HTML and this is how you put JavaScript code inside the HTML file. So again, for one last time to wrap up everything, you have a website and that's the HTML file. So JavaScript is executed on the website. So therefore we need an HTML file so that we can run the website and then inside the code we just implement things onto that website so we'll be going over this in future tutorials but just keep that in mind and really understand that JavaScript is something that we use on a web browser so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video welcome back to the set of JavaScript tutorials at the text space and this is going to be 
creating variables tutorial 3 and we're going to be creating these things called variables so basically if you know from math you have a variable and it's a letter and you know you solve something for that letter sort of like that in here and basically the same thing but it does a little bit different oh it has a little bit different style to it so you can do that but you can also use a variable to store any type of information so you can use a variable to store a number or a letter basically which is covers all types of information so to create a variable we have a variable a is equal to and that's how we create a variable so we just create we say var the name of the variable and then we set it equal to something but we don't have to set it equal to something we can just put a semicolon which will denote that we're gonna have a variable and it's gonna be called a and eventually I'm gonna use it sometime but instead of doing that we're gonna set a equal to five now notice when I write five I write a semicolon after that and that's because in most commands in JavaScript in almost every single command you end it with a semicolon to tell the program that you are done with that line of code and that's very important to remember you have to do that with almost every single statement and we're gonna create another variable and it's gonna be called B and we're gonna set this one equal to text this time to put text you're just gonna wanna put parentheses or not parentheses sorry quotes and inside the quotes you can write any text that you want so you can also use single quotes I usually use double quotes um, but basically we can write any text in here so we're gonna write the text space and that's basically how we create a variable so once we create a variable we'll learn how to you know do things with them but basically what you need to know for this tutorial is that you can create these things called variables and these variables can have any name I could just name this you know this but it would be very inconvenient obviously um, but um, you give it a name and the name is very important to remember uh, they are case sensitive so if I have an uppercase a and a lowercase a they're two different variables they're not the same variable so if I have uh, another variable a is equal to 5 as well these are two different variables because it is again case sensitive so just remember that remember that you can store strings or letters you can store characters but when we store characters last thing I'm going to show you in this video is when you store a character <clears throat> say I just wanted to store the letter F I just have to use single quotes you don't want to use double quotes so just single quotes and then just put F and then same thing for any other single letter so that's the last thing that we're doing in this tutorial. The next tutorial will be going on um, and exp I'll explain how to output these variables to the screen and all types of other cool stuff that we will be going through um, in the rest of these tutorials. If you have any questions, if this isn't working, if you want to download Atom or you're having issues downloading Atom, put my, or just put a comment below and I will um, respond to you and help you with it but basically i'll put the uh, link to adam in the description below and it's pretty much the same as notepad plus plus like i said um you just basically have to download it and as you can see comparing the two they're the two of the same like i mean in index.html is at the top and it's the same thing just a different interface and i just started using Atom, so it's just something that I've been using lately. And that's basically it. So for this tutorial, just remember how variables are used and how to store information in them. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Welcome back, and this is tutorial number four, and this is output to the screen. So we're basically going to go over how to output different uh, things to the screen. So as you can remember from your last tutorial, we created variables, but in the variable, it didn't do anything when you refreshed your web page. So to make it actually show up on your web page, basically what we're going to do is do this. So under the variable, we're going to and make sure it's under the variable. So we're going to type document dot write parentheses and a semicolon. 
and this is the basic code to output something to the screen uh, so remember this it's very important uh, remember this line of code and remember all of this stuff obviously but uh, this will be something that you use a lot and will be something that's actually really easy to remember so document write we can write something inside these parentheses and what we want inside the parentheses is what we want to write out to the screen so if I want 5 to display to the screen, like I have stored in variable A, then I would just type A. I wouldn't type 5 because 5 is equal to A. So if I just type A and control S to save it and refresh the web page, I get 5. Now what we could also do is B. So B stores the information, the text space in a string. So when I go to output B, we're going to get the text space, and that's just going to display across the screen. And that's the basic line of code that you need to output things to the screen, and we'll be using it a lot in JavaScript. So remember that. Uh, remember how to output your variables. Remember how to create your variables, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Welcome back to the tech space and we're going to go over something really quick in this tutorial and that's comments. So basically um, when you're building a program you're going to have all of this information and it's going to need you know some type of highlight to it. Uh, if you have similar functions let's say we have a variable a, a variable b and we're, they're all numbers. Variable c is equal to 20. We're going to create five of these so go down the alphabet alright so basically we'll delete this string variable and we're gonna say we have these five integer values and they're gonna do something very important in our program but we don't want to use them right now I just want to reference them um, later on so what I can do is add a comment and to do that you have two forward slashes and then I can just write um, use these variables in or um, later on and basically this is a comment it won't affect the program at all it'll just say you know disregard this line of code and when you go across if you go down to the second line and you start writing stuff you have to redo this comment so you have to write these uh, two forward slashes to create the comment on each line. But once you comment out the line, that whole line will be uh, just hidden from the actual program. And it will just be of reference to you. And you can pretty much write anything you want uh, inside of here. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to write multi-line comments. Just so in case you want to write a whole bunch of stuff um, to you know directly describe each variable or each type of thing that you're doing you're going to write one forward slash and then you're going to push eight or shift eight which creates the ampersand and as you can see everything else gets grayed out because it thinks it's all comments so to end that you're just going to go ampersand again and then another forward slash and then when you drag this across lines i can have a multi-line comment so before we had single line comments it's just the two forward slashes and then when I went to the next line it didn't work as a comment. In this case we have a multi-line comment that you can use as long as these opening and closing braces or sort of little symbol things are uh, spread out from each other. So just put these, put the ending one on the line that you want to end the comment and the starting one on the line that you want to start the comment and that's basically it that's all i wanted to show you guys in this video a very quick tutorial just like the last one uh... but don't worry we'll be going into more depth of how to use uh... javascript after this tutorial so see you in the next tutorial and that's basically it if you have any questions uh... post them in the comment section below or concerns or anything post it in the comment section and i will uh... get back to you and try to help you out with that but other than that, I'll see you in the next tutorial about arithmetic operators. Welcome back to tutorial 6 of JavaScript. And what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is going over some math functions that we can do with variables. So, basically, if we have a variable, and we learned this before, 
We have two different variables, x and y, and they're both equal to something. Well, obviously, I give this one a different term. Um, basically, we can do different tests with that. So to do that, we're just going to want to document right. And then once we go to, because document right writes out stuff to the screen. So let's go ahead and save this. Get this page blank. And then we basically can do things like this. So x, I can take x plus y. Save it, and then it'll output x plus y to the screen. We get 12. Same thing, I can do x minus y. Minus 2. And then I can do multiplication. Now multiplication, you use the ampersand, which is the shift 8. And that means multiplication. Save it again, go back to refresh, and we get 35. So the last one is the division sign which just means 5 divided by 7 and we get this really long decimal so that's basically how you use math operators within a uh, using two variables or any type of thing in JavaScript but there is one more and actually I'll go ahead and show you it in this tutorial even though it really won't be needed much but um that one is modulus. And modulus is shift 5. It's the percent sign. And modulus basically takes 5, or the first one. So it takes x, and it divides it by y, and it doesn't give you the result. It gives you the remainder. So if I had x is equal to 10, y is equal to 3, and I do x divided by y, I'm going to get, you know, some value like 3.3333 but watch what happens we get 1 now if we would have just did x divided by y then we get 3335 or 3.34 um, but basically with the modulus what that did is it took 10 divided by 3 and it said okay it goes in three times and the remainder is one so it spat back out it gave you the remainder instead of spitting out the actual answer it gives you the remainder of that uh, math uh, function so you can again use this in pretty much everything in JavaScript and they're very useful remember how to declare these remember the symbols and that's basically all I wanted to show you guys for this video how to use some of the math operators and later on down the road we'll go over a few more but those are the basic ones multiplication division addition subtraction and modulus and remember modulus is the percent sign gives the remainder ampers or not ampersand but um the uh this symbol, I cannot remember what it is called right now. But this symbol gives you, which is or shift 8, gives you the uh, multiplication. And then, of course, addition is just plus and minus is just subtraction sign. And that's how you write uh, math operators into JavaScript. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Welcome back to the JavaScript set of tutorials and the text space. And we're going over tutorial 7, Boolean variables or boolean values my bad so basically what boolean means is if you don't know is true or false and true or false on a computer is represented by zeros and ones so zero is equal to false and then one is equal to true so basically when we have uh, computer programming it basically works the same well actually it does work the same for when you're uh, thinking about the logic of a program so when you have a zero it'd be false and you have when when you have a one it's true and that goes from you know uh, a lot of things from computer engineering to the technician uh, network tech uh, side of computers to software engineering and programming so what we're going to do is create a few boolean variables. So they're going to be they're going to have a value of a boolean, but they're just going to be regular variables. So we're just going to have a variable x 
and set it equal to true. Now when we do that, you notice we have all lower cases. And then we can carry a variable a and set it equal to false. And these are very important to go over and uh, JavaScript or any programming language because when you're testing condition, sometimes you only want one thing to be true and one thing to be false. And just remember this and keep this in mind for the next tutorial that when you have uh, true and false statements, uh, that's basically what a programming is about. It tests conditions and it tests if they're true if it's true then it runs those that set of instructions if it's false it doesn't run that set of instructions and this has a very big impact on your programming uh knowledge and your implementation as well so just remember how boolean uh variables work uh with java and how you, how you declare them and remember that again zero is false or represents false and one represents true. So remember that and you can head to the next tutorial. Welcome back to Tech Space. This is tutorial eight and we're gonna be going over strings once again, but a little bit more in depth. So what strings are is basically a string of text that you can store in a variable, which we learned earlier. And what was special about this was that you could also create another variable set it equal to a number but what we want to talk about in this tutorial is specifically strings so as you remember um, we could create two strings or we had two types of strings that I showed is the character and then the sentence string now when we are actually writing these out to the screen so we say document We just call the variable. We can click save, and there we go. We got x, which said the text space. Now, what we can do as well in that same document, right, is that a plus from our um, past tutorial, you remember, if you use plus, you could add two numbers together, but you can also use them to string two sentences together, two words together. Um, two characters together, two numbers together, or a combination of all of them. So what we're going to do is say x plus y. And then we're going to save it. And as you can see, the text space and the single character c. Now let's change y. Let's just say is the best in all caps. So now when I do x plus y, we'll add a space there. It'll say the text space is the best in all caps. Now that's how you call two strings within one document, right? And that's how you print it out on the screen. Now if I basically had the same thing, but with numbers, we already know we can add those two things together fairly easily. So when I just do this, document right x plus y we get the number added together same thing with strings as i just showed you um you do the same exact thing you just add these two things together and the last thing we can do is use a combination of the two so we're going to say verbal x the time is And then we're going to say variable y equal to 430. Now, obviously, I can't store variable y is 430 like that. So what we're going to do is just say 4.3 or yeah, 4.3 and just say 4.3 stands for 430. So when I document write x, I can say plus y. And then what we'll get is the time is 4.30. Now since zero wasn't, you know, relevant and really didn't print it out on the screen, but there we got the time is 4.3. So now I could just go inside here again. And the last thing I want to show you is you could add multiple plus times. 
So if I wanted to say plus, you know, x as the time is, I'm going to change this to time, space, so it's going to say x, the time, space, and plus is plus, and then y, and then plus, and today is Saturday. And we'll save it. Now as you can see we have x, then we say plus, you use a string is plus y, which is 4.30, which just re represents the time poorly, obviously, and then plus another set of quotes that says, and today is Saturday. So when we save this and we run it, we get the time is 4.3, and today is Saturday. And that's basically how you use strings and variables together. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Welcome to tutorial 9 of JavaScript, and in this tutorial we're going to go over something called the if statement. Now what the if statement is, is it basically goes through, and it will test a condition, and if that condition is true, and if, then it will run a bit of code, but if it's false, it won't run that code. And that sort of goes back to, or it directly goes back to when we were talking about Boolean variables and zero being uh, false and one being true because you're testing a condition for those two variables you know you want to know if it's true then you're going to run the code if it's false then you're not going to run it so to start the if statement you're going to write if simply and then a set of uh, parameters or parentheses and then you're just going to make two braces for a body now inside these braces what we're going to want to write is the instructions that will run if the statements inside these parameters are true. So let me explain to you what that means. Let's create a variable called x. Let's set that equal to 5. Then we're going to create a well we'll change it up a little bit. We're going to create a variable called john inside of 45, we'll just say it's their, their ages, and then Jack, and set it equal to 35. Now we want to know if John is older than Jack. So if John is older than Jack, which he is, we're going to print out these instructions. But if he's not, then we're not going to do anything. So basically, to do that, we write John, if John, inside the parameters, is greater than Jack then inside these braces let's say or let's say out to the screen document writes John is older Let's press Control S and then run this in the browser. Now we see John is older because this is a true condition. Now if we make it false, if John is not older than Jack, then we can save this again and run it. And we'll see nothing because this is a false statement. Therefore, this code inside of here isn't going to run. So again... You could write a whole bunch of codes in a code of inside here. So say I had multiple statements uh, that I wanted to output. So say we wanted to say it a bunch of times to the screen, five times, if it's true. So let's make it true. Save it. You can see it outputted five times because this condition is true. Now we're gonna say we're gonna test this statement. If John's older than Jack, which he is. Then we're going to say John is older. But if Jack happens to be older than John, then we're going to run a different set of instructions. And that's where the else comes in. So the else statement we will go over. And that basically is if John 
isn't greater than Jack, or John isn't older than Jack, then just run whatever is in this body. So we're going to say document write Jack is older John lied. So basically what we're saying in here is that if John's older than Jack, write John is older. If he's not, else write Jack is older, John lied. So when we run this, we're going to get John is older because he is older in this statement is true. So if we change Jack to 55 and make this statement false again, we get Jack is older, John lied. And that's how you use the if statement, and that's how you use the if else statement. So, you do not need to include the else statement, but it is a way of, you know, if this condition ends up false, you have a sort of like a go-to to write out something else to the user to let them know that this didn't uh, become true, so you ran the rather, or the other uh, piece of code instead. So that's how you write an if statement. If you have any questions about the if statement or the if else statement, uh, shoot me a comment or just leave me a comment on my channel or on Twitter, on Google+, and I will get back to you. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. In the next tutorial, we'll be going over loops and what loops are in programs. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you next time. Welcome back to the tech space. Um, this is the what's now JavaScript tutorials number eleven, and we're going over the for loop. So basically, with the for loop, uh, we if you watched the last tutorial, we went over a little uh, video, and I showed you guys basically how not how they were used, but what the contingencies were for each loop and what you needed for each loop and basically what an incrementer was. So if you need those notes, you can go back to the what tutorial 10 and get those notes. But basically we're going to be building a for loop. So we'll go ahead and get started here. What you're going to write is for and a set of parameters in a body. Oh, and I had a, a few people tell me to... Uh, make the code a little bit bigger so made the code a little bit bigger on the screen so it's a little bit easier to see so this is how you create a basic for loop you have four set of parameters in a body just like in the last video and in this parameters you're going to test three different things so what you're going to want to do is declare a variable first so we're going to have a variable x is equal to zero we're going to say x is less than 10. Then we're going to set x plus plus. And if you remember from the vast last video, it said this is where you declare your variable. This is where you set the thing that's going to eventually end the loop. And this is the incrementer for the loop. So inside here, we can just say something simple. Just dump document right. Uh, this is a for loop okay so basically what's going to happen here is or what is happening here is we have a variable x and it's set equal to zero and the second thing is our condition so it's saying while x is less than 10 then we want to run this code and the x plus plus is the incrementer that says every time you run this code add one to it so if we go ahead and click control S, and we go to our website, you see this is a for loop printed out 10 times on the screen. Now what we can see here is the incrementer from the last video, like I said, it doesn't have to be up here. So I can delete the incrementer from up here, but when I run the code, you're going to see it doesn't even know what to do. I think the website actually just crashed. It's just loading and loading because it's just running a continuous loop. So what I'm going to do is close this. Open it back up.
Oh, I thought there was a button to actually open up Internet Explorer on here. Where's it at? Like word means. That's very weird. Okay, so run index.html again. Hurry up and go take that loop out. Okay, so just add the incrementer back. And rerun this. Okay. So we get this is the for loop once. Now, what we're going to want to do is take out this incrementer, click save, go down here, and in the body of this code, we can write x plus equals 1. <clears throat> and that will increment your code by 1 without putting the incrementer up here. So basically, we have a loop, it declares the variable, it says x is less than 10, and then we have the code in here that's going to run 10 times because 0, it, every time this loop runs, it's going to say, okay, 0 plus 1 is 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2, then 2 plus 1 is 3, until it gets to something that isn't less than 10, so that would be 10. Now if I had less than or equal to, which is written with the less than sign and two equal signs in Java, then it would run until 10, which means I would get 10, uh, 10 of these. Uh, this loop would run 10 times, therefore this would print out 10 times on the screen. But if I don't have this equal to, it'll run 9 times because as soon as it hits 10, it will stop running. So we'll say equal to 10. Put the incrementer inside of the for loop and then refresh the page. And it's not loading for some reason. Okay, so I have to put the semicolon at the end. Rerun it. Having some issues. What could it possibly be? So we'll say a different thing. We'll do x is equal to x plus 1 as the incrementer. Okay, so if you take out the extra equal sign, I think that might have been something in the old JavaScript or, <clears throat> forgive me, I've been programming in like a few different languages, like four different languages, so use one equal sign and that means less than or equal to 10. Use the semicolon at the end and then say x is equal to x plus 1 or you can say x plus equals 1, which I know is a little bit weird. But that'll increment x every time by 1 that this loop runs. So when we save that and run this, we get the same code. Now say if we were to say, do this, and then save it, and we run our website. Actually, I think that might crash it. Maybe I shouldn't have put that many. Let's do, <laughs> Let's do like uh, 10,000. It can handle that. Okay, so... We'll reload the website if it will reload. There we go. So we got 10,000. This is the for loop statement printed out on the screen. And that's the basically how you use a for loop. Uh, I know that I sort of messed up a little bit by uh, putting two equal signs instead of one. But sorry about that. And you do need to add the semicolon at the end over here. You could also just use the incrementer again up here to sort of delete the annoyance. Uh, X plus plus is the easiest one. Make sure you use uh, lowercase. And whatever variable you declare up here, say I was to de declare the variable apple, then I would have to say until, you know, apple is less than or equal to 10,000. And then I would have to say apple plus plus. So it's the same thing, and then I could just say Apple a bunch of times on the screen, and we'll have it even say it more times. We'll see if it loads 100,000. Save it, run the website again, 
And it might take a second to load, but I'm pretty sure it'll run. And there you go. So it'll run it, uh, the Apple uh, console log onto the screen or document right onto the screen uh, 100,000 times for the for loop. And that's basically just how you can change the variable within the for loop. Um, and that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. And I feel like there's something... There's one last thing, okay, so the variable also can be declared outside, so I could also say, you know, variable apple is equal to zero, and in here, just say apple, semicolon, and it would say, okay, apple is zero, so zero is less than or equal to 100,000, and then when I control save it, and run it again, we'll get the same screen just reloaded with the scroll bar at the top this time because when we say put the variable out of here it'll already assign that value to this variable so thank you guys for watching that's the end of the for loop in the next video we go over the while loop which we talked about in tutorial 10 again if you need those notes go back to tutorial 10 before you go to the next video but thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time Welcome back to the tech space and this is our 12th tutorial on JavaScript and we're going to be going over the while loop. So in the last video we went over the for loop and now we're going over something called the while loop which I again explained in tutorial 10 um, and we're going to go over the actual implementation of it in this video. So basically as you can see you're going to want to write while, set of parameters and a body. So that's basically, you know, what they call the syntax of a lot of JavaScript code, a lot of C++ code, is you write, you know, um, some, you know, th thing, and it usually has parameters or empty parameters, and it always has, you know, a body. So just remember that and keep that in mind. But the while loop basically is going to run this set of parameters. So if I have and in it or well, variable z is equal to 10 and then I say while 10 is less than 100 then run this set of code so another thing I want to mention is it isn't like the for loop where you can have multiple things in here unless they're separated by something called uh, logical operators which we really haven't went over what yet we'll go over after the next video so for right now we just have while z is less than 100 run this code so it'll say basically document right and we're just gonna say Let's perform some like calculation since then we've just been writing out strings or we can actually just create the string. String y z whatever you want to name it. And we're just going to print that out on the screen while uh z is less than 100 and just like every other loop we need an incrementer so z plus equals 1 and that and run our code save it and here's our loop so just like the for loop ran we have this website or this web page and we printed out string yz which was set to the text space string variable and that just basically ran out or printed out on the screen until the uh, while condition was no longer true so we use this incrementer and it's sort of just like the for loop actually a little bit easier than the for loop um, so it should be easy to understand and that's how you use the while loop and in the next video we will go over the do while loop so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial welcome back to the text space and in this tutorial we're going to be going over something called scope so 
in JavaScript, we have something called scope that is how a variable is represented. So basically when we have uh, things like, you know, functions and stuff like that, <clears throat> later on when we go over that, we're going to have un blocks of code that are blocked off from other code. So basically say I have a function and I'll just write a quick function. I'm not going to explain it but I'll make a function and inside that function I just want to say this and then you know call my function again this is doesn't have to make any sense right now what I'm just trying to explain is something else so basically what I'm trying to get across right now is that when we have functions later on we're gonna have to create variables and this is how you create a function but we're gonna have to create variables inside of the function so say if we have integer x and I set that to hello there and that's inside this function. Then I can, uh, when I go to document write something to the screen, I can just say document write x, and you know I can do this tons of times. I can just create another variable y that says, "What are you doing?" sort of messed something up there but basically we have a variable x and y and I can just say you know document right x plus y and we all know how to do that um, unfortunately the function thing I'm going to explain later but for this tutorial like I said I want to explain something called scope so when you create a variable inside of a function it's declared inside the function it can only be used inside that function so in order to get something out of that function we want to declare the variables outside so when I go to create a different function, so that's f0, we're going to create a function called f1, put braces on it, and then say, you know, variable, say I want to um, use variable x. So say, var or say variable p is up here, and it's equal to uh, john. And that's the only thing that's in this function. And basically, well, no, I'm not even going to, that's the only thing in this function for right now. We have a function called f1 and a function called f0. Inside f1, there's a variable p called john. So down here, I want to document write out the variable for, uh, or I want to use the variable p. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and load this web page. So I said it says hello there, how are you doing? Because it ran function zero and or F zero. And what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna take this function out and in function zero we're just gonna see if we can use document right P because we reused, we already created a variable called p, but, you know, so we should be able to use it and get whatever it's set to. So we'll document p and we should get john somewhere. And as you can see, it did not run properly. is because this is a variable that is assigned to the F1 class. It isn't a global variable and it's not, it doesn't have a global scope as they say in JavaScript. So to change the scope of it, what we're going to do is take it, copy it, and paste it above every function in that uh, in your code. So now, when I go to console log, say we'll delete everything out of these two functions, and when I go to document write, not console log, when I go to document write p out onto the screen in both of these functions it should work both times
So we're gonna document write p and function or f function f1 and function f0, and so we could get we should get John out on the screen twice. Now I know we haven't went over functions again, but this is just the concept of global variables. So since it's outside of each function, each function can access that variable. And we can see by running this, we get John, John, and that's because each function got access to it and each function printed it out on the screen. And that's basically how it, scope is. If you have a variable inside a function, it can only be used in that function. If you have a variable outside your functions on top of all of them, it is called or said to have a global scope and can be used in all of your functions. So remember that when you're building your functions later on when we go over them and we go over how to use them, uh, remember this. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Hey everybody, welcome back to the tech space and in this tutorial, tutorial 17 of JavaScript, we're going to be going over something called a switch. So what a switch is, is it basically, it's sort of like an if statement. So instead of using multiple if statements, we can use something called a switch and it's declared just like you would think, switch, and actually wrote that all in. But we don't want to just put that in. We want to go step by step. So switch. And it's going to take a parameter. And the parameter is just going to be one thing. So say we have an integer x. Or let's say we have an integer lights on. And it's equal to true. We're going to switch. Have a switch for light on. And actually, we're going to set this equal to nothing. So, we have some variable that's equal to, or that's called light on. And then we have a switch that tests that light on. And then inside the switch, we're going to create cases that have different uh, values for them. So, in case, basically, is what this says. In case... Um, and we'll say light on is equal to 1, which is in this case equal to true. So light on 1 is true and 0 is false. So in case of 1, we're going to say um, document writes. And we're just going to say the light bulb is on. Or the light is on in that line and then after that case we want to write a break now to add another case we have to do the same thing case of two but in case or in this uh, problem there's no two there's just false and true so zero and one so in case of zero in case of false document right the lights is off and then again, write a break. Now, the last thing that we want to do is create a default statement that will run in case something isn't true. So, say the light on variable is equal to 2 and there's no case for it, it'll default run this. And we're just going to say, you entered the wrong number. You entered the wrong number number and then even up here we see light bulb one is equal to one so we're gonna get the light is on when we save this and run it so when we save it and run it in the browser we're not getting anything um wonder what that is so we get switch in case of light okay so i have it capitalized and again i told you this is case sensitive light on switch and the light is on okay so now let's change this to zero and we should get the light is off the light is off and now let's change it to 699 save it and we should get you entered the wrong number you entered the wrong number so that's how you use a switch to test some variable 
and cases to test that variable and don't forget to use the breaks after each um after each thing so you even have to use break after default in javascript so don't forget to add the breaks and that's how you create a switch so see you in the next tutorial uh if you have any questions post them in the comment section below and i will see you next time Welcome back to the tech space and in this tutorial, tutorial 18, probably be the most important tutorial in JavaScript that you'll go over ever. So I'm going to make it as least complicated as possible. If you were in tutorial 15, you did have like a sneak peek to what functions were, but I'm actually going to go over the syntax for it now. So to, what functions are is we'll create some comments. Functions are to break your code up into groups. So break your code up into groups that are similar. So you're going to have, you know, um, tires go with cars or, you know, bullets go with go with guns and functions like this so how you create a function is you just write function and then you give it a name so say we have tires so function called tires and every function has parameters and braces now that's basically the basic declaration for a function now like I said functions are to break your code up in groups that are similar so we can go ahead and delete these comments and we're just going to work with this group called tires and make it do something. So we're going to say document rights. And we're just going to say inside this function, we're going to have a um, variable that's called type one. And that's going to equal 22 inch tires or actually we'll go with this so we'll go old tires and we'll create a variable type 2 and set that equal to sort of old tires create a variable type 3 Set that equal to um, average tires. This is a very random topic, <laughs> obviously, but it works. So um, then we have uh, above average tires. Sorry, I'm not used to typing on this keyboard. Um, and then type 5, which is equal to excellent tires. Don't worry about spelling errors, no one cares. Just a program to show you an example. So, um, basically, we have four or five variables, and there's type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5. And we're just going to document, write, type 5, and save that. And we're going to say, okay, you know, I have this function, I have all these tires, I'm ready to run my code, and I just want to print out that I have ex excellent tires, not tired. So, excellent tires. And then, you go to run it. And you see, well, my code's not running. Why isn't it running? That's because when you create functions, you have to create something called, uh, it's called calling a function. So to call a function to your program, you have to use this. You say the name of the function, the parameters, if there are any, and if there aren't, just leave the braces, and then a semicolon. And what that says is, okay, I have this function called tires, that's cool and all, but I don't want to run it until I declare that I want to run it. And this is dec the declaration um, of that function saying, okay, you can go ahead and run that function now. 
and it's usually called calling the function. So when we say tires and we save it, we go back, we get excellent tires because it ran that function. So in the next tutorial, we'll go over how to use multiple functions. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to the tech space, and this is the 19th tutorial on multiple functions. So in the last tutorial, we went over creating one function, and in this tutorial, we're going to create another one. It's just basically show you how they tie together. So we're going to say car brands, since in the last tutorial, we came up with the boring name of tires. So we're going to say car brands. So variable is equal to Honda. Don't care about the capitalization. And we'll just say, you know, Chevy. And just set them equal to the string values. And then... Alright, so this is the last one we're going to create. And now we're just going to say, you know, document that's right. My favorite car from this list is plus Porsche. And then up here, we're just going to say. My tires condition plus type 4, and we're going to use both of these functions. And to use them, remember, we have to call them. So to call them, we just say the name of the function and the parameters if there are any. So since we have tire or the tires function called already, we just need to call the car brands function. And then run it. So we get let's pull up the code. So we get basically um, my tires condition is type four, which is above average tires. So my tires condition above average tires, and my favorite car from this list is Porsche. And then we can also go in here and make it look a little cleaner. You know, make capitalized Porsche. Put a space there. What else could we do? Put a space in between here. Or a period, then a space. We save it, and then it looks a little bit better like this. And that's basically it. So we could also just say plus, and then give it a period for ending. And then it ties all together. So that's basically how you use two functions together. And we could keep going. Actually, I'll go ahead and create one more function. And this one will just be called types of sandwiches, <laughs> or I'll just say types of meat, and we're going to create the function, make sure it's lowercase. And we're just going to say variable me one is equal to uh, him, we'll say him, and variable me two is beef, and variable me three lobster and then we're just gonna say documents rights and then document right my favorite meat is and then we'll just say meat two beef so I forgot to end that, and then put the plus sign, 
delete that, make sure there's space there, and then we'll just print this out as well. My favorite meat is beef. So basically, that's so that's how you use a program. As you can see, it says my favorite meat is beef. As you can. See. So that's basically all you do to use multiple functions. As you can see, I called my favorite meat is beef, and all three functions are called down here at the bottom. So you can call a function anywhere you want, but I chose to call the functions in here. And in the next tutorial, we'll be going over uh, parameters and how they work within functions. So I'll see you in the next tutorial, and if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below, but I'll see you there. Welcome back to the tech space and in this tutorial we're going to be going over function parameters. So to do that we're going to go over a simple function and we're just going to say function x and what function x is going to have as I just said it's going to have a set of parameters. Function okay well actually we'll say this we'll say math or math operators. And inside here, we're going to say we want a variable x and a variable y. And we just want to write out x plus y. And we'll just actually just call this function addition. So we document write it, and we say, okay. We're going to call our function, and everything's right, okay, we'll save it, and should run on the screen, right? Well, no, that's not going to gonna happen. Basically, what you need to do um, to make this work is add in when you call the function, you have to add the parameters in here. So, remember when you built the array list, and it had, you know, the elements in order from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? That's how a parameter list works. So when you call the function, you give the parameters their values. So when I'm calling the function right here, I can just say 60 and 120. And it's assigning 60 to variable x, the first one, and 120 to variable y. The same thing, I could go on and on with variable z. But first we'll run this one. So variable x plus y. Um, and then when we call it, we set x equal to 60 and y equal to 120. And then we save it and run it on the screen. And it didn't work. So the reason that didn't work is we can just say, okay, instead of saying variable, we just have two parameters. And we already know the parameters, so we don't really need to say okay you know we're not declaring a variable in javascript you have to declare the variable say if we had x set to something or set to 60 up here then we'd say var but when we're just doing parameters we don't have to put var we just put the name of the variable because it already assumes that we want a variable in that function so the we're done running that we have document write, it's just going to write out x plus y, and then we're passing in the values through this function when we call it. So we'll save it again, and run it, and you can see we get 180. So again, in JavaScript, we do not need to say variable x and variable y. It already assumes that you're creating variables as parameters. In other programming languages, it's a little different, but... You don't have to worry about that. We just have two parameters, x and y, and we're adding them together. Now, we can also create a function called, you know, multiplication, and function called subtraction, and then a function called division. And 
and what we want to do is throw different values in here. So since we used x and y already, we don't we can't can't use x and y again. We can use x1 and y1 and then do the same thing. Just document right this out on the screen but using the correct operand and changing the variables so we have x1 y1 then we go down to subtraction paste it x2 y2 parameters are x2 y2 And then we have x3, y3, parameters x3, y3. And basically we just need to change the operators now. Subtraction. And there we go. So now when we call addition, we get this out on the screen. And before we write that, We'll say, we'll make it look a little bit nicer. So addition, then run, we'll go here and do the same thing, multiplication, and then run it, just so it looks a little bit nicer, and it's a little bit easier to see. So. And then, what is the last one is division. And then, we just say, give this some room. And, that's basically what we're going to want to do. But, when we run this, let's see. We don't get anything. So, that's because when you create these things, these strings, and you put them as parameters, you can't just declare them straight as a string. You have to set them equal to a variable, and you don't want to pass it in like that as a parameter. So, basically, when we do this, we're going to have a parameter set. to just how it was earlier go ahead and just delete this out of here and then before this we have to write another document right and then inside there write the answer but we're not going to do that we're just going to go through here and I just wanted to show you guys that strings can't be called into your uh, functions directly they have to be declared as variables or set as one of the parameters of that function so we're going to go ahead and run every single one of these traction and then we'll see 50 30 and we'll run them at a separate time so 50 30 we get 20 and then it runs so we could go through all of these and it'd run just fine, but there's no real reason to go through and just call these functions in just because you already know how they're going to run. If you divide 9 and 3, because you're passing those into the function with those, par those parameters, so in the division function x3 becomes 9, y3 becomes 3, and we're just going to see what our answer is. 3. So 9 divided by 3 of course is 3 and that's basically how you use multiple functions with parameters in each function and get results back from them. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions post them in the comment section below and I will try to get back to you and help you out. If not um, just uh, please like the video, subscribe, check out the rest of my videos and the rest of this series so again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video